So my mother-in-law wanted to know what my yarn winder, yarn swift, sorry, yarn swift that I made with Tinker Toys was used for, whether I was winding yarn, yarn into balls or not. So this is a yarn ball. Now I really like working from balls because it just keeps the yarn right there and neat and compact. Even when you get down to a tiny amount, it's still very, very neat and not sloppy at all. Versus when you when you buy a, a yarn in a big box store, commercially spun yarn, commercially dyed yarn, it comes in a scheme like this. Uh, I like I like these. Um, it stays relatively neat, but if you're going to do any traveling at all, once you get down to the last few yards, it just it turns into a nightmare and unless it's already wound into a little ball. Then it's not that bad. And also when you're working from this, a blob can come out or, you know, knots or they can just be the color can't or won't be uniformed in your in the pro project and instead of stopping and ripping all that out, if you already wound your yarn into a little ball, you can just you already know the quality of yarn you're getting, so it's not it's not a surprise and a hassle. You can also buy yarn like this. I like this kind of yarn the least, or this packaged yarn the least. Even when you're trying to wind it into a ball, this gets tangled and ratty, and it's, it's just really annoying. So I try not to even buy yarn that's like that. Now your more luxury homespun or hand-dyed yarn comes on hanks like this. And I actually, this one is neater because I had this one pulled out so I can show you. This is just a couple of loops of yarn, strands all looped. And so back in the olden times, a person would sit here and a person would sit across from them and they would wind the ball as they held it. Now I can put this on the backs of my chairs, but it's still labor intensive to sit there and wind the ball having to go around my chair each time I pass because it doesn't turn. That's where a yarn twist comes in. It spins around and then you can get a yarn winder. You can either do it by hand and put it in a ball or you can get a yarn ball winder and turn it into cakes like these. So these are also center pull. You can pull the yarn straight from here and knit or crochet or whatever it is you do with yarn or you can go from the outside. Now these two, once they get down to less yardage, it's kind of a hassle because they'll collapse in on itself. So I typically try to always do the balls. I like yarn balls. I like saying balls. <laughs> so I will show you. I have my yarn winder attached to my Swift with some yarn already on that. I'm going to turn on the light and do that for you so you can see. I knew which light, which was which. Okay. So, this is a lot better if one of the kids are in here because they kind of hold it steady. It doesn't have a steady base. But again, for $20 versus $50 on a real Swift, you know, it's, it's not going to be perfect, right? And I don't mind if it creeps near me. I can just push it back away. All right. So my thing here is a little tangled, there we go. And this is so much faster than what I used to do, which was just manually do it by hand on the back of a chair. It took me usually about an hour to do a hank, and now I can get this done in just a few minutes. So I definitely love it, and I'm excited about getting organized and making all of my yarn into nice little neat balls thanks to my handy dandy Tinker Toy Yarn Swift. Thanks for watching the wonderful world of yarn.